Hi everybody, Takeho. Uh, thank you for coming to today's event. Uh, the purpose of today is to support our friend, Congressman Ted Liu, who has done a lot, not just for Taiwanese American community, but for Taiwan. Nanchikai uh, Wu, six hosts. Huh? We have six hosts, and at this time I would like to introduce them and come up to stage. Our first host is Mr. Jackson Yang. Mr. Yang. Second is Huey Lin. Huey Lin cannot make it, um, but he wanted me to say hi to Mr. and Mrs. Liu. And uh, is Mr. Dr. Tom Lee here to represent Huey? <laughs> And that, our third host is Mr. Gerald Wong, Jerry Wong. Jerry, thank you. Our fourth host is Mr. Frank Yang. Frank, thank you. Our next co-host is Mr. Dennis Wong, who is a graduate of Georgetown University. He couldn't be here, but his parents, Mr. JP and Alice Wong. JP and Alice? Come on, come on. Come on up. And I'm the last co-host. At this time, we're going to invite each host to uh, say a few words. Mr. Yang? Hello. Can you see now? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we know Ted Last two years, his first uh, two, two years term do great job. We should give him a big breath. <laughs> and I think we should keep him a seat in Congress. Yes. In order to fight for Asian American and for Taiwan, for the uh, more respect in this great country. And to get an equal right in this USA. And we know Ted is very close to Taiwan and he uh, always thinking about uh, our Asian American people in, uh, in this country. And that's why we all come here. And uh, it's more important thing is in the coming November, we should call friends and family to vote for him to a high vote in the Congress. 我想今天这个周末我们就利用这个地方我们温馨的大家来为这个 真的無時無地都在為我們爭取在這一塊美國這個土地啊都一點的這個被尊重那我今天雖然是幾位是說代表做這個host 这个我们华人的这个主地的受募款辦多場很重要但是有時候他們時間安排是有困難的所以我真的很希望大家能夠聚在一起的時候辦一場大一點的這個很重要 Although I've been told that he was selected by the Air Force for a promotion to Colonel, possibly. So, congratulations in advance. Uh, Ted has done a lot for the Taiwanese American community, especially for second generation. He's been to so many events to support us. And 
Kennedy did, didn't know, he was the first member of Congress before the recent Howard election, before the election, to go on the record to support a free and fair elections. That message was very loud. It makes sure that there's nothing funny going on. So, in conclusion, Ken has done a lot, but you're not here to listen to me. So let me turn the microphone over to Ken. Ken? Jackson and Julie Yang, thank you for all your help and support. Uh, Frank, thank you for your help and support. Uh, we love your products and uh, keep going with your great company. And also, uh, Huey Lin, uh, Gerald Wang, uh, Dennis Wang, and uh, Peter Chen. Thank you for uh, helping make this possible and all of you for coming today. I thought I'd talk a little bit about racial profiling. Um, let me start by saying America is a great country, an exceptional country the best in the world. It's one reason I joined the U.S. Air Force on active duty, one reason I still stay in the reserves. Uh, but we do have our blind spots in this country, and race relations is one of them. So if you look at the history of Asian Americans, uh, there has been a history of discrimination against this community from the whole yellow peril hysteria earlier in America's uh, history to the Chinese Exclusion Act an internment of over 120,000 Americans who happened to be of Japanese descent during World War II, to the beating death of Vincent Chen, the solitary confinement of Wen Ho Lee, you do see a history of discrimination. And last year, there were a number of cases of Asian Americans uh, who were arrested and indicted for espionage, only to have all those cases drop a few months later. So when I started reading about these cases in the New York Times, uh, one that was Sherry Chen, I got very concerned, so I wrote a letter uh, to the Department of Justice asking them uh, to investigate, to change their procedures, and before they could even respond, a second case happened. Uh, Professor Xi, uh, FBI agents entered his house, about a dozen of them with guns drawn. They arrested him in front of his daughters and uh, his wife. They took him away, said that he had these secret blueprints to this device uh, that he was uh, selling to foreign countries. It turned out that those blueprints were the wrong ones. They were public information. And the Department of Justice dropped all charges five months later after ruining his life. In the case of Sherry Chen, she was a federal hydrologist. They arrested her in her workplace. They also indicted her for espionage. And then they dropped all charges later because they also got it wrong. And you had two additional uh, federal employees that also had this happen to them. And the only thing that is the same among these cases is the defendants look like you and me. Uh, they happen to be uh, Asian American. And so I wrote a second letter to uh, the Department of Justice, this time with 40 some members of Congress, signed by the heads of the Latino Caucus, the Black Caucus, and uh, the Asian Pacific American Caucus Chair, uh, Judy Chu. And last month, the Department of Justice responded. They actually changed their procedures and said for espionage cases, of going forward, we would have another layer of review. I'm uh, basically making sure that this doesn't happen again. Uh, yesterday, we uh, launched an Inspector General complaint to the Department of Justice asking them to specifically investigate these four cases in the past and then how that happened. And in my mind, there's only two explanations for this, right? Either uh, FBI agents and prosecutors uh, were enormously incompetent across many different offices of which I find hard to believe because these are very professional people. Or something else was going on. And my view is something else was going on. And, and when these officials look at actions that normally would not be suspicious, if a German American did them or a British American did them, it looks suspicious because an Asian American did them. And that's uh, what uh, we're trying to prevent. Uh, this notion that somehow people who look like us 
were not loyal to this country, that were not of this country, that were second class citizens. And uh, there's going to actually be a 60 Minutes piece this Sunday at 7 on those stories. So I encourage you to watch it. And it's something we're going to uh, keep fighting against because it is this viewpoint that will hold this community back. It will affect your children and your grandchildren on uh, the notion that somehow uh, we're not American. And uh, that's something we're fighting for uh, in Congress. Uh, and with your help and support, uh, we'll make sure that our government doesn't keep doing and taking these actions. And we saw the Asian community, uh, Asian community come together. We had lots of organizations, civil rights groups, who all sent letters to the Department of Justice. But I think that's one reason they responded uh, with their rule change. So we do look forward to continuing working with them uh, to, again, make sure this never happens uh, to any American. And then the second issue I thought I'd talk about uh, are foreign relations. I am going to go to Taiwan uh, later this month uh, with Chairman Ed Boyce of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, we'll be visiting the first female president of Taiwan, uh, Tsai Ing-wen. We're very excited about that. And meeting with other uh, Taiwanese officials. Uh, we'll also be going to South Korea on that same trip. And my view is that uh, as we keep progressing in the 21st century, that it'll be the Pacific century. Uh, California, America are poised to take advantage of their economies uh, in the Asia Pacific region and we want to make sure that we can continue the peace and prosperity that we have now, make sure we can encourage trade and make sure we don't have, again, discrimination in coming uh, to Asian Americans in the United States. Last year I went on the floor and uh, celebrated the Taiwan Relations Act. Uh, I support Taiwan's inclusion in uh, worldwide organizations such as the WHO and as you uh, may know I was born in Taiwan, came here when I was three years old and I'm uh, very very fond uh, of Taiwan. And thank you all for, for being here, for coming here to support me. And then let me conclude a little bit about my race. Um, you're in my district, it's a beautiful district. It goes from Palos Verdes in the south along the coast uh, through Redondo Beach, Santa Monica to Malibu. It goes east and gets Calabasas, Agoura Hills, uh, drops down, gets West LA, Bel Air, Beverly Hills, and Hancock Park. It is a beautiful district. It's probably uh, the least angry district in America. Uh, but it also um, has a lot of people that can run against me who are quite wealthy and have the capacity to do so. So I have, I have an opponent. He is a wealthy doctor uh, out of Beverly Hills. And in a presidential year, we want to make sure we can communicate with other voters. And it's more expensive because there'll be more voters. And what you're doing is very helpful uh, to me and my campaign so we can make sure that uh, we win this campaign also uh, and that we can continue uh, to fight for Asian Americans uh, in Congress. Uh, so with that, thank you again for being here and uh, happy to answer any questions you may have. And uh, just uh, once again, many of you supported me in my first election for Congress. I'll never forget that. And thank you again for being here to support my first re election. Thank you.大家可以主動跟他介紹一下認識他真的做得非常好他真的做得很好只有兩年了他做很多了這個方案那這個出問的時候啊都可以來跟他照相好不好啊我們要看一下我們要看一下你要看有沒有人要提問好的那一分的問
most Democrats are against TPP. Uh, I mean the members of the Congress. <laughs> so TPP, it happened in two steps, right? The first step was something called fast track, which didn't say anything about the substance of the TPP. It just said, we want Congress to pass this so that if the TPP is negotiated and comes to Congress, we can't make any changes. It's one vote up or down. So a lot of Democrats, believe me, oppose that. Because I think we should be able to make changes to this if we don't agree with certain provisions. Uh, but that did pass. So now we're talking about the substance of the TPP. It's like this big, right? It's a huge monumental document. And so we're so, slowly going through it. Many of us haven't taken any positions yet because it's a different issue now. It's actually what is in the actual language of it. Um, but it turns out that now a lot of Republicans are opposed to the substance of the TPP because it does negatively affect a lot of industries that they support, such as tobacco. Right? So it's pretty harsh to tobacco companies. A lot of pharmaceutical companies now uh, do not do well under the TPP. So now I think there's an issue where the White House is trying to get Republicans on board. I haven't taken a position because I just haven't. Until it seems imminent to me, I'm not going to sit there and read this huge document. But I will at some point. You know the issues at all? Let me uh, real quick conclude on a, on a positive note. Uh, so last decade, uh, the U.S. Census reported that Asian Americans were the fastest rising ethnic group in America. A few months ago, the Pew Research Report came out and said in the coming decades, 80% of America's growth will come from immigrants. By mid-century, immigrants from the Asia Pacific region will outpace any other region, including Mexico and Latin America. And so you're seeing America shift demographically, and uh, it's going to become more diverse, and that's a good thing. And uh, thank you again for being here, and, and uh, I'll be around uh, having some really good shop shop. Thank you.